to all of my fans in USC territory. I'll do a little dance for you. Yeah, I was wrong. You were right. USC wins the game. Are we dancing here, Mike? We're dancing, baby. We're feeling because we have a lot of enthusiasm. We do. We're doing. We do. And you know what? USC was very impressive. You, you would admit that. You were at the, Oh, no question. Yeah. You were at the game. I was in the house, baby. Yeah, yeah it's great to get back here. Here's a guy at the Rose Bowl. I was in the hizzle, I should say. I lost my head there for He's a minute. He's got all the lingo down here. Your observations of the Rose Bowl, Mike, what stands out? I think I think it's possible that Penn State did not face a quarterback in a passing game like that previously. Yeah. And really their their secondary was exposed for the first time. It really was a weakness that 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 their schedule didn't force them to really reckon with until the Rose Bowl game. Um I'm not sure that it was as much of a blowout as some people are portraying it as. Right. Uh, Penn State made a lot of mistakes that kind of snowballed on them at a, at a time when, when when USC got a tremendous rhythm going offensively and, and the whole thing kind of kind of blew up in their faces. Uh, USC, the better team, no question about it. People are going to continue to have this uh, sense that the Big Ten is just completely substandard, and it's hard to argue. Uh, Penn State had a good year. Uh, it did not end in a good way. And let's give USC credit. They capitalized on those Penn State mistakes in that second quarter. No but you take away that second quarter, this was this was a pretty good game. This would have been a good yeah, game. Yeah, I, I, I think it, I think it there were I think there were some things that happened in the second quarter that had you, you go back and unravel, and it, it, it could have yeah. it could have made it a, a pretty good game. But you know, USC better team. Better team. And, and again, the, the secondary is a, is an area that, that that really was a problem. That Penn State was fortunate that it wasn't exposed before it was. Sanchez did a great job of exposing it too. Yeah. I'd love to see an 18 playoff and really get this settled. Well, this is an old story. Yeah. Let's look ahead. What should we be seeing with Penn State? What's going to happen next? What, what's what's positive? What we uh, what, what do we need to have? Well, I think positives are Daryl Clark. Uh, I, I think he's going to be one of the best quarterbacks in the country uh, and one of the best leaders in the country next year, uh, as long as he's healthy. Uh, running back is a real good situation. Linebacker is going to be a real si- good situation. I think defensive line is going to be very good. Um, three gr- three areas where they really are going to need to address. Offensive line, wide receiver, and secondary. Okay. Uh, senior-oriented groups there. And uh, I, I think secondary is the one where they're really going to have to, and Joe Paterno acknowledged this, really going to have to go out and recruit some kids who hopefully can play almost right away. We need to recruit some receivers at Penn State as well. I like the local guy, Graham Zug, and what, Brack, Brackett? Bracken, Brett Brackett. Other, Brett Brackett. But there are three and fourth guys on your team. We need a number one and two. We need a Norwood uh, uh, Butler type guy. And there's some guys out there that haven't committed to guys. Six foot three, speedy receivers. You guys know who you are. Come to Penn State. Yeah, Joe there's really a, would a say. growth opportunity there. I'm with you. That's 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 a good point, sir. You know, we got a good quarterback already, and you got another one that's in the making. They already committed there, and Newsom, Kevin Newsom. Yeah, they're okay there. They're okay in a lot of areas, and I, I still think Penn State will be good next year. But secondary, O line, and wide outs. Those are the areas that are going to have to develop. So. Good season for next year. What surprised you the most about this season, real quick? What surprised me the most about this season is how they were able to have all these injuries and suspensions and, in, and all this flux on the defensive line and come together, keep that unit together, and make it not only not a problem, but a strength. I think Larry Johnson, the defensive line coach, did a phenomenal job in that area. And they came up roses.